Pat Love back from Love Healing Hearts, and we're going to continue with Fanta's testimony and her story, and I hope it helps you ladies big time. Here we go. Go on, Fanta. Thank you very much. I was saying that um, when um, I came to the realization that I needed to just wait on God, mm -hmm. and the most I got would then do and, and transform my life right. the way that I desired to and bring right. my husband to me and we come together as one because honestly and I thank God for my husband God is mm -hmm. so good he brought me true this is truly a man of God mm -hmm. and the, when we started dating we started out in the woods mm -hmm. doing God and that's why we always wanted to start out in the, the in, in God's word and to be playing together and that's how we started <laughs> and, but, yeah we used to be on the phone all night studying the word. You hear me? I love it. I love yeah. it. <laughs> it, was, it was just the most beautiful thing. I mean, we we didn't even know that we were meant for one another. We were just two broken vessels. Hungry for the, the Lord. Lord yeah. Trying to get some healing. And that's how our friendship started. We started that's studying beautiful. the word of God together. And... Over time, it just grew into this beautiful friendship, and then the Lord revealed it to us. Like I made you all for one another, so you know, I just wanted to add that because you know that was such a, a very pivotal point for both of our lives. Yeah. You know, just to get because for me, I kept having felt relationships. And I'm sorry, babe. I don't mean to. Put, all right. No, it's all right. Go but on. I, I kept having um, felt relationships because. I didn't know the real God, first of all. I didn't know the supreme deity was Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I was spiritual. And so I would be with these people that were claiming to be spiritual too, but they didn't have any staying power. Right. Because they didn't know that the real love was the, the pattern and the model that was given by Jesus Christ. And um, so, you know, fancy now we started off you know, reading the Bible together and just soaking up that word and drinking that water and, mm -hmm. you know, which is the word and getting that healing and bringing that brokenness, yeah. you know, back together. It was yeah. a new thing for both of us. And it was just the most transformative yeah. thing. And I'm, I'm going to let Francie get back. But Beautiful. I had to jump in because it hasn't stopped. I mean, every day we still enjoy studying Jesus together, just like we did the first time we ever opened the Bible together. It's that's just, what I'm it, talking it doesn't, about. It doesn't stop. That's right. And, you know, and that's what I truly um, just, I, that, I'm so grateful because um, that, I, I, that's what I have wanted. That's what I wanted in the past. I just yeah. didn't know uh, I was going about it the wrong way. I, I was not, you know, even I grew up in the church, I, I really truly didn't know the Lord, like I know Him now, but right. I, I, I had I didn't take the time, mm -hmm. and I and I didn't stay in the scriptures and just fast and pray, you know. And but I wanted it. I knew I, I wanted Him, and I desired it in my heart. And I had a um a, a one elder sister who has um, transitioned now, who came into my life truly from the Lord, and she helped me to be able at uh, one point in my life. Um, she helped me to be able just to go through the scriptures and break them down for me. And, you know, mm. she's like a mentor. You know? That's called a, a divine assignment. That's beautiful. Yes. She was there. And that she helped me. That's, she put me. That's, where I, that's why I am where I am right today. You know, because one of the reasons, because God used her. God used her to help guide me in the in the direction that I desire to go because God knows my heart. He, right. He, he, he knew my heart so he knew that um that I did not want to um to fall right and and, and really to, to lose. That's right. Um, That's right. And I did not I didn't want that at all. So mm -hmm. I just give glory and I pray. So right now I I I've been working on and still in positioning to break the generational curse of right. women of the family. Because I don't I I don't desire that for our daughter. I do not desire that for our daughter for them to um have to go uh relationship after relationship I plead the blood of Jesus. There you go. Um, they, they will not and uh 
have to go through that and experience that at all, mm-hmm. you know. So just to know where those, you know, and just I talk to when I speak to my talk to my mom uh, and my uh, my grandmother's no longer with us and my aunt about their past relationships and everything. One of the things that I found that they did not do, they were not transparent and they did not, con- I mean, like, they were not like honest with themselves, mm-hmm. you know, and 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 so maybe that was that generation, you know. Mm-hmm. But that's one of the things I chose that I wanted to be is just pen- transparent and honest and forgiving to myself. I forgave myself, right, right, myself, right, right. Transparent and just and honestly and just open my heart and just allow all of everything to be to pour out, all you know, to be to purge everything that's not needed so that I can truly heal. Because right. I didn't want to play games. I right. Mean, yeah. That's right. So that's right. That's my testimony. That is my mm-hmm. testimony. Glory mm-hmm. to God. Mm-hmm. Now see that? Now you see, ladies, when you hear stuff like that, you know, sometimes we think, you know, we're in this little pit all by ourselves. I was in the same place Fanta was in, man to man to man to man. You know, you just go through these things thinking, well, if I do this, he'll like me. And if I do that, he'll love me. And if I do the other, he'll want to marry me. And you're looking at him back, you know, you look back in retrospect and you're saying, I wouldn't have wanted to marry him. I wouldn't have wanted to marry What the heck was I thinking? And that shows you just how hard up and desperate you really were. And we mm-hmm. all have been there. I'm telling you, we all, and I was raised by both my parents. Mm-hmm. You hear me? My father knocked mm-hmm. my mama up mm-hmm. and my mama refused to marry him because mm-hmm. she wanted him to marry her for the sake of her. He was marrying her for the sake of me because he felt mm-hmm. like if they could lay down in the bed together, they could take on the responsibility together. My father was a man's man. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing that balanced me off, and I know God chose my father to be my father, even if it was through hook or crook, was mm-hmm. because my father was the one that pronounced so many blessings and good things and gave me so much positive reinforcement. And he talked to me and he shared things in life. Do you know I would have been doing time today Mm. I hadn't had a father like my father because my Mm. mother left me so scarred in so many areas, yet she taught me communication skills. She taught Mm. me etiquette. She taught me character, but Mm. she had had a nervous breakdown and I didn't get her best of motherhood. I got Mm. her worst. I got the crumbs and I spent my life as a young girl wishing I hadn't been born because I always felt like her life would have been happy if it hadn't been for me. So Mm. I tell you, when God heals you from stuff, it is totally a done deal. But when you're still operating out of your wounds, your open Mm -hmm. runny sores, your, your, your scars, your mental anguish and those sour memories and you can't process them or make head or tails out of them. I'm telling you, you make poor decisions from them. You're also, you are also at your worst. You have this rage and this, this, uh, these outbursts and all of that comes from all that scarring and all that hurt. And I know I would have done something stupid that would have landed me in a, in prison too. And some of the stuff that didn't land me in jail was simply because I did not get caught. That's it. But yeah, you know, we all go down dumb, dumb lane and it ain't fun. But it takes God to screw our heads back together again. It is really not to go down dumb, dumb lane. It's not. You don't want to go there. Hey, but you know what's that? Huh? We need to go down dumb, dumb lane before we find small, small roads. Yeah, you got that right. You got yeah, that so, right. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, sometimes it's a tragedy, and uh, it's really a hurtful thing to wake up from it. But at the end of the day, 
you know, when you get renewed and, you know, it's, uh, sometimes, you ha- I mean, it's just, it's, it's hard to, under- to understand God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So That's sometimes. right. Because his ways because are God above our ways. Beyond us. Right. But at the same time, I have to thank God for the experiences that I've had because right. if that's what it took to bring me to him, right. then all the glory belongs to him. And I that's just right. always continue to pray for the people that I heard along the way when I was trying to, you know, trying to find him and trying to find myself. Right. And, right. You know, I continue to pray for their healing and I continue to pray for my own healing, you know, and just continue to grow as best I can and mm-hmm. use that word as the as the tool. That's right. That's yeah, right. You know, so. That's right. Boy, yeah, this so has been much. Appreciate you, Pat, love. You know, uh, I, I really hope that, uh, and, I, and I believe that a lot of women uh, who are listening to this can, um, because, you know, we hear, I mean, it, it shouldn't be so common, you know, the, the father not in the household, but it is. Mm-hmm. But I want them, you know, to really uh, know that it doesn't have to be uh, the same cliche story, the same, you know, because I, we're meant to be, a, you know, I truly want to bless families. You yes. Know? I mean, that's yes, that. he does. Yes. Yeah, he wants that. He wants to fix family, you know, not just single parent households. Sometimes it has to be that way. Mm-hmm. You know, it depends on the situation. Right. But um, you can rise above. We can, we can all rise above. Right, right. Um, that's you know, very as true. A child, as a child, you don't, you know, a child doesn't have control over right. what happens in their household. Right. Or no, you know, um, and then and then what carries on, and then how they, um, you know, when they become an adult, and mm-hmm. then what mm-hmm. they experience as an adult. Lord knows, you know. So that's why it's so important to look the, the generation, the next generation. You know, I always say should be going further and making bigger strides in the generation before. That's right. That's right. The one thing I want to say real quick, uh, it was a point you made about that, that generational cycle that, that we so much, um, you know, replay. It's like a, an instant replay. Every generation is an instant replay of the one before. Well, I know a man who had never told anybody that he had killed some, someone. And Mm -hmm. he has a son who did the same thing. And the Mm -hmm. son never knew that the father had done it. Another case, another case is uh, Mm -hmm. when I look at my parents, I look at both my parents, both Mm -hmm. of them, both were raised by both mother and father in the house. Mm -hmm. My father I don't know about his parents, but from the way it sounded like he talked about it, it looked like they were all raised by their parents as well. Now, Mm -hmm. my nieces, my brothers, everyone in my family raised their kids together. If they didn't have kids, they're still together. Yeah. Uh, my, My nieces, they raised their kids together And when the kids got about high school age, you know, then they, you know, went on and got their divorce. But they they grew up with both their parents in the house. And Mm -hmm. that's what I'm I I can see that cycle of the ones that didn't. They end up being the ones that generation after generation are broken homes, generation Mm -hmm. after generation, broken Mm -hmm. homes. And I don't know if you saw the movie Forrest Gump. But yeah. it was there was the cutest little scene when he came to see his son for the first time, didn't know he was a daddy. And he mm. came to see his son for yeah. the first time. And after he, you know, after he processed that and went through all the shock, he sat down and watched TV with his son. And the mother stood back and watched the two of them tilt their head and look at TV the exact same way. And they had never been around each other. So we don't realize how we, how we pass on things. And that's why fathers, I say this to you. It's so important for you to pronounce blessings over your children. Reverse the curse, reverse the curse, reverse 
the curse because through your words, God can act on your children and their children and the, and the curse can stop here. You know how they say the buck stops here? Well, all of that crap can stop right at your door at your doorstep because you can stop it from entering your household by what you say out of your mouth to your children, what you declare over your children's lives and over their bodies. You have to declare and decree. You have to pronounce these things. When my father, he wasn't even saved. This is how powerful a father's blessing is. When my father would sit down and tell me, you know, you, I can tell you're going to be a good driver. You have the knack for driving. You have a head for it. I can tell you that you take after my side of the family, which means you'll always be able to find a job. You'll never be, be in a position where you can't find work. It was always the case. The only time I couldn't find a job was when God didn't want me working there and he had something else. That was the only time. But all my life, my first interview was a shoe in just like he said. So mm -hmm. they weren't rich jobs, you know, you know low paying jobs with the bottom line. He did, he forgot to say I was going to make a lot of money. He didn't put that in. So, yeah, that didn't happen. But he I did always find it easy to get a job. Yeah. So, I say this to say, you men take responsibility. Speak over mm -hmm. your children. Don't just plop him in front of the TV while you read the newspaper. Take time and talk to your kids. If they're slow, tell them they're smart. Call things that are not as though they are. If they, if they have a bad temperament, tell them that you see such a beautiful thing inside of them and, and you know God's going to really blossom it. Speak those things that are not as though they were because by you doing that, you empower it. You plant something into that child. If they don't look good or if, or if kids make fun of them, tell them how wonderful and how skilled and how adept they are and, and how good they are at this, that, or the other. I don't care how minuscule it is. Make it to be a big deal and tell them they can, if a person can make a million dollars plucking eyebrows, they can, they can make a million dollars doing whatever they love to do. Encourage them. Right. Don't be so quick to criticize. Encourage them. That's what blossoms a child's spirit. And yeah, that's yeah. what blesses their future. Your words. And that's all Mama Sita has to say. That's the end of yeah, Pat's two cents. Now, Thank you, sister. <laughs> now, y'all can add what you want to add, and then we're going to close. But this has been so rich. I really appreciate you guys doing this. I really do. I really appreciate it. Would you tell them your, your YouTube channel so they can also watch your videos? Because these guys are laborers in the vineyard. They're doing YouTube channels as well. Yes, our YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel called um, Y'all Love 7. And um, spell it. It is spelled spell Y-A-H-L-O-V-E. And the number seven. There you go. There you go. Yeah. We just, you know, we just, we just doing, we're just doing the best we can. Like, just like you, Sister Pat, you know, to try to offer some healing to the world. Right. You know, try to atone for our sin. To, um, you know, to try to break the patterns. And, right. Uh, you know, just try to be a part of the community worldwide. Yeah. Uh, intervening that's taking place right now. Yes, know? yes, yes. That's great. You know, it's not about, you know, it's not, I, I don't, I'm, me personally, I always challenge myself to not be afraid, to be honest, and to be open, and to see how that can help. And so, you know, we thank you, Pat. We thank you so much for opening up this channel. We thank the Lord Jesus, you know, for coming into our lives and Revealing us to ourselves and helping us to become renewed. Thank you, and, Lord. Uh, yeah, you know that. That's pretty much. That's it for me. Thank you, Mama Pat. You're welcome, Fanta. Would you do me a quick favor as we close? <laughs> okay. Would you sing "His Eyes on the Sparrow"? Yes, I can sing a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Just sing what you know. That's good. 
Listen to this beautiful angelic voice, you guys. And I'm going to use her on my website. You watch. Okay. Here we go. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadow my heart feel lonely when long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion a constant friend is he. For his eye is all the sparrow. And I know that he watches. Over me. Thank you. That was my husband on my I hear him in the background. Yes. Thank you so much. Doesn't she have a beautiful voice, you guys? Yeah, we're gonna cat yeah, we're gonna trap her real good and get her to do a whole song. And we'll have her practice and work on some so we can start having some uploaded on on the website and oh i'm telling you we're gonna do a team effort and i also want to have jonathan do his poem so we're gonna do that on another day too god bless you guys i really thank you so much this is what i mean about being a team nobody has it all everybody has different experiences and different people can minister to certain people in certain ways that some others can't so i just say this to you be open to hear whatever people have to say about the Lord, because just because you haven't experienced him doesn't negate his reality, doesn't mm -hmm. negate the realness of his existence. Listen to people who have been touched by his love, and then you decide, go on and take the plunge and try God out for yourself. God bless you. And thank you again, you guys. I really appreciate this. God bless you, everybody, and remember God's into love. I'm sorry, what were you saying, Jonathan? No, I'm just saying right back at you. We appreciate you the same way. And we appreciate everybody that's, everybody that's listening, you know, everybody that's paying attention and trying to gain some insight from this. We appreciate and love you all, too. God bless you. Thank you. Now, God bless you guys. Have a good night's sleep. and. Mamacita has spoken with her two cents. Toodles.